Hello, um, my name is Macy Harbin and I did my book review number two on um, the book Something from the Oven by Laura Shapiro. Um, it was originally published in 2004 and the simple way to describe what this book was about um, is to say that it was a summary of the evolution of the food scene in our nation post World War II. So to delve into that a little bit more, um, Shapiro is going to first open the book by talking about these brand new ingredients that people were seeing and that were being advertised, you know, in the 1950s. And these ingredients are going to be things that we do not think of as irregular at all. This is going to be cake mixes, boxed pastas, canned goods, um, jello packets, marshmallows, things like that. So things that we are totally used to seeing in the grocery stores and are perfectly normal to be in our homes. Well, in the 1950s, these ingredients were brand new. Um, the idea of not having to make something completely from scratch was totally foreign um, when it came to cooking. And so obviously these ingredients, these um, you know frozen meals, things like that were received with a lot of skepticism. And that is exactly what the um, first chapter is about. Shapiro is gonna talk about how when the advertising industry was approaching these um, new consumer products, they were um, calling it, you know, the housewife's dream. So up until this point, um, women were mostly at home and they were cooking and this cooking that they were doing took them all day long to prepare three meals because each ingredient that went into every meal was prepared completely from scratch. Um, so as you can imagine, if this is the way that they are used to doing things, when these new ingredients enter the scene, um, everyone is super unsure of, you know, what the implications of these kind of ingredients are, how consistent they are, how good do they taste, um, and of course the cost was factored in as well. So with that um, background on what was going on in the 1950s, Shapiro, you know, uses it as fuel to, um, write the rest of her book around the way that culture as a whole was kind of changed um, because of this change in the food industry. And I didn't realize quite how revolutionary food could be or these ingredients could be when it came to our nation's um, evolution, but it definitely was. So she's going to, um, she took the reader, She's she took me through um, the way that recipes were changed because of these new ingredients. So um, let's see, if marshmallows had never been introduced before or never been seen before, then a s'more was a completely foreign concept. So Shapiro is gonna talk to the reader um, basically about all of these new things that were now possible because of these ingredients and um, specifically kind of delve into the roles, um, just the role change, you know, from women and going to from women being in the household cooking to women entering the workforce because they had all this time. And I'll touch on that a little bit more on um, when I get around to why I like the book so much because it has a lot to do with that. But I did read this entire book cover to cover, every word on every page, and I did like it. Um, it was a challenging read. Uh, I had a much easier time with my last book that I did for a book review. It was more of a narrative style. Um, this book is your typical nonfiction book. It is packed full of information, um, tiny fonts, <laughs> so it was a lot to ingest, but I will say that Shapiro, um, gave the reader all of this information with, you know, wit and humor and interesting kind of pop culture twists on it. So it wasn't, it wasn't the worst book I've ever read by far, and it did give me a unique insight on, um, the way that women's roles changed, and I was talking about that earlier, but I guess prior to reading this book, I had this preconceived notion that um, all of a sudden, women just decided that they were through with these um, seemingly sexist tra traditional roles that had been assigned to them. So, you know, being housewives, staying at home, that sort of thing. And in my head, I just assumed, you know, one day they woke up and decided that they were going to do more than that. Um, not that there is anything wrong with staying home with your children or being a housewife. But I guess in my head, I just assumed women decided they wanted to do something else. They wanted to enter the workforce and pursue their passions and careers. And while I think that that progressive um, attitude did have something to do with it, 
a lot of it had to do with these ingredients being introduced um, to society. And I never would have thought that, you know, ingredients could have such a large effect on a culture, but they definitely did. So because these ingredients were, um, you know, they were prepackaged, they were making cooking easier, where you could do frozen meals, that sort of thing. It changed cooking for women and men because the book also is gonna to touch on, you know, men who were in the profession of being a chef and how they received these ingredients. But um, these ingredients are going to make cooking much easier and a much quicker process. And because of that, women have this extra time that they can, you know, enter the workforce, pursue things that they have wanted to, but just have not previously had time for. So that was really interesting. And um, that insight and that revelation on my end was probably one of my um, favorite reasons that I read this book um, or favorite parts about this book. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm glad that I did. I would recommend this book, um, but only to a specific crowd of people. So if you are a person who just loves to read about the evolution of our nation, um, the change that comes about, why this change comes about, and you know how it does so, I think that they would enjoy this book. Um, and then if you are a person who really takes pride in your cooking or just you know invests in it a lot, I think you would like this book. Um, I recently got married, so I've been doing a lot more cooking. So this book was pretty interesting to me because I realized that um, cooking would be a much, much larger chore for me to do if I didn't have these ingredients that were introduced to our nation in the 1950s. Um, I centered my lesson plan around this book on the production and distribution side of food. So I originally wanted to um, base my lesson plan off of that sixth grade standard that talks about how our nation changed after World War II. I think it fits nicely with um, the theme of this book. But um, I tend to always gravitate towards like fifth and sixth grade standards. So I tried to challenge myself and create a lesson for the primary grades. And a second grade standard is for students to be able to explain the production and distribution process. And I think that that has a lot to do with the food industry as well, which is kind of how this book inspired that lesson plan. So in my lesson plan, second graders are gonna be presented with these foods and they're gonna have to talk about and explain um, their journey before they made it to their table, right? So, you know, they maybe were harvested at a farm and then they went through the distribution process um, all, made it all the way to the grocery store and then all the way to their table. So that's what my lesson plan is centered around and how it kind of correlates with this book. And once again, I did really enjoy this book review and the unique insight that it gave me. And I hope that everyone enjoyed their books too. <laughs>